Kind of Koto Marky here. Haven't done many videos still lately. I've done a few smaller ones, but it um, uh, doesn't mean I've stopped. I'm still here and more videos will be coming. Don't you worry. Okay, so this is a video that will appeal to two groups of people. One is people that are affected by retroactive jealousy. And the other is people who are fans of uh, The Mission. The Mission being a rather good, in my opinion, goth band. Uh, I'm not sure whether they identify as goth. There's a trend among kind of goth bands not to identify as goth. Um, but I think I think they do, actually. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I've seen them in concert a couple of times. They're, they're brilliant. Very, very good. Um, now, the two series in question are, so there's the, the series about retroactive jealousy and a series I do called Psych Songs, which is uh, looking at songs and song lyrics and how they might express something about psychology or the human condition. And uh, check it out. There's a, there's a playlist if you want to see the previous ones. Uh, there, there is a bit of a bias towards kind of uh, 80s goth rock on there, uh, for which I make no apology. <clears throat> but there's other stuff on there. I've got on there. Queen. Um, who else have I done? New Model Army, who aren't goth but were, were from around the same era. Brilliant lyricists. Uh, so, a whole range of things actually. So, I this is the second time that a piece of music that I already like uh, has made me think, hmm, I wonder if this is about RJ or, or expresses RJ. First time was I did a song, uh, a Black Sabbath song, which I think uh, seems to express RJ. It's not kind of 100% clear that it does, but, you know, when you look at it from the RJ with the RJ lens, it seems to make perfect sense. That was a song called St. Vitus Dance. Um, <clears throat> so check that, that video out as well. Um, so, yeah, strange mix of uh, interests. Maybe you like the mission and you, are, you also have retroactive jealousy, which would kind of be a weird coincidence, wouldn't it? Although it wouldn't be too much of a surprise because... The mission are, <clears throat> one of the things I've talked about in other videos um, is about how people with retroactive jealousy kind of um, uh, over-romanticise sex. Um, and what I mean by that is that they imbue it with uh, a real kind of sacred quality. And some of the other songs by The Mission appear to, to do that. I mean, they, they strike me um, as very hedonistic um, and very romantic and, and, and my definition of romance is in this sense is where you imbue additional meaning to something <clears throat> with something um, so uh, a bit like Shakespeare said you know nothing is good or evil less thinking makes it so um, nothing nothing is meaningful unless we make it so we, we kind of apply uh, meaning to things uh, and I think you know, to me that's what the definition of romance is so I'm not talking about you know romance between two individuals or a romance I'm talking about you know romance in the wider sense of the word romance with a capital R so they're very romantic um, very hedonistic and they romanticize the hedonism um, so the song I want to feature is on the, is from their first album God's Own Medicine um, and uh, if you listen to the whole album, which I recommend you do, because it's a good album, uh, there are songs that uh, that very much romanticise sex. There's a song in there called Love Me to Death. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, coughing. I haven't got COVID or anything. It's uh, just a post-eating post cough. Um, so, yeah, um, check it out. There's the, 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 uh, I think... and. It's interesting the way that Wayne Hussey, the lead singer and also the lyricist, uh, main songwriter, sings is also you know he he um, he puts a lot of drama into his voice. Uh, sometimes I think he's a bit guilty of overdoing that and over singing a little bit. Um, so it's everything is romantic. Everything is imbued with you know with with more meaning than perhaps it, it maybe perhaps it, it deserves. But then that's what we enjoy, don't we? It gives us a lot of pleasure that adding extra meaning into things. But not if you've got retroactive jealousy. Okay, so if you are um, a mission fan, 
uh, and you're interested in the musical and lyrical aspects of this and you don't know anything about retroactive jealousy, stop! Apparently, body language wise, that um, with the fingers splayed is almost a universal sign for back off or stop um, across all cultures. Um, so I'll throw that bit, that in for nothing. <clears throat> so stop <laughs> and go and watch uh, uh, my uh, introductory video to retroactive jealousy, and that will explain what retroactive jealousy is. Some numpty. I did this on a previous video and some numpty said, oh, you haven't explained what retroactive jealousy is, you said nothing about it. And I said, yes, check out my introductory video to, on retroactive jealousy, which is an introduction to retroactive jealousy that introduces you to it. Um, so, yeah. So if you don't know what it is, uh, but in short, in a sentence, if you're easily, easily kind of uh, easily satisfied with explanations and you don't want to kind of get too deep into it, retroactive jealousy is an OCD related condition uh, whereby people get hung up. Uh, over their partner's uh, sexual or rom romantic past. Okay, so this song, uh, which is called uh, Let Sleeping Dogs Die, uh, may not necessarily be about this, but oh boy, does it fit it. Okay, uh, so that's that's the that's the subject of this video. Uh, looking at looking at the lyrics of this song and just looking to see if, if they if they do match retroactive jealousy which I think I think they they definitely match it whether it's a song about it I, I wouldn't go as far as to say that's the case but it could well be <clears throat> Don't excuse me uh, so let sleeping dogs die okay so uh, you you know we've probably all heard the phrase let sleeping dogs lie um, which is, you know, uh, like a kind of um, a proverbial kind of statement, a kind of a, a social meme, if you like, uh, a piece of uh, folk wisdom, uh, as in, you know, don't, um, <clears throat> you know, if a dog's uh, fast asleep, uh, don't wake it up because it'll bite you. That's that's what it's about. A, a more a uh, common expression more recently is don't poke the bear and don't poke the bear is a phrase that's used a hell of a lot in retroactive uh, jealousy recovery in fact i think i've done a video um uh called that maybe i've done, certainly done a video where i um i was i found this amazing um realistic bear sculpture uh and there's a thumbnail of me uh poking poking the bear poking it not with my thumbnail a thumbnail as in you know what i mean <clears throat> So let sleeping dogs die. But the phrase is, the actual phrase is let sleeping dogs lie. So let sleeping dogs die. Um, you know, that's up in the ante. That's making it a little bit, a little bit more, uh, a little bit more of a strong statement, I suppose. Now, Wayne Hussey, the, the lyricist, uh, has been accused, rightfully so, I think, of uh, sometimes having terrible lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> where he just uh, links together a whole load of uh, well-known phrases. Um, so some of his songs are almost like, you know, uh, too many too many cooks spoil the wrath, the stitching time will save you nine, um, don't walk under a ladder, um, <laughs> putting all these things together. Um, <clears throat> and the person that accused him of that was actually Andrew Eldridge. Uh, so a little bit of history, uh, a little bit of rock history here for for you if you like that kind of thing. So um, the Sisters of Mercy was a band that Wayne Hussey was in before the mission. Uh, and the Sisters of Mercy really is is the baby of a man called Andrew Eldritch. Uh, that's not his real name, that's an adopted name. Uh, who incidentally, another free little kind of nugget, uh, is, is very big, you know, he's always complaining that, you know, uh, they're not a, the Sisters of Mercy isn't a goth band and he's not a goth um, <laughs> and um, he makes some kind of snarky comment about well I wore, wore black socks once and now people think I'm a goth uh, but if you change your name to Eldritch which is almost synonymous with gothic um, you know how can you then argue that you know you're not a goth really um, perhaps you know by a broader definition but there we go so Andrew Eldritch um, who's an interesting character uh, really was the he, he was one of the founder members of the Sisters of Mercy and Wayne Hussey was a guitarist in the Sisters of Mercy uh, and then there was a big acrimonious split and um, they uh, most of the band went off to form uh, what is now known as the Mission <clears throat> and there was a big fight over the name because Andrew Eldritch I'm just going to close that gap because that's annoying me Andrew Eldritch uh, also wanted to use the Mission um, but they went their separate ways. Um, both remain successful. I guess the mission 
probably more uh, commercial, really. Um, I don't know if that's fair to say. Um, they they're both uh, yeah, they're both great. The Sisters of Mercy still around, still touring. Um, I'm not aware that they've recorded anything for a while. I know they've written some new songs that, that they perform live. So <clears throat> Andrew Eldritch, yeah, had a, a bit of a pop at Wayne Hussey and said, you know, you um, <laughs> you're a terrible lyricist. Um, but this song, "Let Sleeping Dogs Die," although it begins with you know well-known you know proverbial uh, phrase. Um, is it a proverb? I don't know. It's not quite a proverb, is it? I don't know quite how you define a proverb, but a proverb probably needs to be kind of a whole sentence, really, whereas this is kind of... Yeah, it is a proverb. So <clears throat> I'm going to um, share with you the lyrics. I have to put my glasses on because I've printed them very small. Um, let's see what you think. Now, so a lot of these lyrics I don't understand. I'm not pretending to be an expert on mission or uh, on this song. Um, so I'll be really interested to hear um, your comments um, on what you think of the meaning of these lyrics. And I will post them in the description box. But if they're not there when you look, it's just because I haven't done them yet. Okay. So, there's the crime of passion and the crime of revenge. But the worst crime of all is the crime of regret. Speak of the devil, another kind of, um, I'm not sure what the correct terminology is but you know proverbial phrase i'll say that's probably inaccurate if you can think of a better phrase and you can tell me it nicely let me know and the devil may speak of you why can't we let sleeping dogs die okay so it becomes kind of apparent as the as the lyrics and the song go on that this is um talking about a relationship this is one partner talking to another deep it cuts deep and the affectionate prose and heaven only knows another proverbial phrase what your words are worth and the giving birth to the giving ground of judgment and by fact of reason you accuse of treason and claim betrayal to the holy ghost of the sacred past that's fading fast and forever Whew. okay <laughs> so a lot in that um without drawing breath so deep it cuts deep well retroactive jealousy cuts really deep and the affectionate prose and heaven only knows what your words are worth Okay, so it's talking about a relationship where, uh, you know, probably probably a very um, a very good relationship, you know, certainly a very passionate relationship, passionate in the, in the sense of loving rather necessarily than sexual. Um, the affectionate prose, so you know, writing love letters and and you know, um, protesting, um, commenting on, on you know, commenting very effusively. Um, on the other person and heaven only knows what your words are worth um, so a lack of trust lack of believing which is what happens in retroactive jealousy and the giving birth to the giving ground of judgment okay so so it's like judgment has been kind of um, given birth to judgment has come into the relationship it wasn't there at the start it's been given birth to the giving ground perhaps because uh it escalates it, it um increases um and by fact of reason you accuse of treason so feeling betrayed and claim betrayal to the holy ghost of the sacred past that's fading fast and forever so this fits with what i was saying earlier about how um in retroactive jealousy people make the romance make um sex make everything uh sacred uh, it actually uses the word sacred. <clears throat> so, feeling betrayed, uh, an increase in that, giving birth to that, which comes from, you know, what was a very affectionate relationship. Um, okay, you turned my hand and turned it over. Sorry, you took my hand and turned it over. That's interesting. It's a very interesting lyric. That I don't. I, I kind of. I kind of think my interpretation of that is it's um, the the underside of your hand, the palm of your hand, um, is the supine um, part of your hand. Uh, it's more, it's kind of a bit more like an underbelly, isn't it? It's more, more kind of vulnerable. The back of your hand um, is kind of you know maybe what 
uh, an exterior that you might show the world, but somebody somebody that's more intimate, you'd see uh, the underside of the hand. Also kind of makes me think of palmistry. So you, you take somebody's hand, you turn it over and you look at their palm to, to read them. So I think what this means is, it's, is, it you, is that you were interested in me um, you, uh, and you wanted to know everything. You wanted to know all my secrets. You wanted to know me intimately. You wanted to know my past. Uh, you wanted to know the real me and all the ins and outs, sports and all. Um, so why can't we let sleeping dogs die? No devil so dark as the devil I know. Okay, so with retroactive jealousy, we uh, we read people's palms, we read their past, we inquire about things, we want to know everything, uh, and then we discover um, devils there. Uh, to us, they're devils. Uh, there's no devil so dark as the devil I know, which you know you can't unknow. Um, that's me talking, that's not lyrics, by the way. There's no love lost and no reason why. I don't really quite understand that those bits talk of faith you talk but you were the one intent on stun you took my glory my glory and pride sanctity defied so again it's that desecration that's destroying this sanctity and the sanctity with retroactive jealousy often is that you know this relationship is special therefore all past relationships couldn't be special or um, you know what you're giving to me is kind of second hand because and that you've given um, you've given this intimacy, this sex, this love to me, but uh, it's cheapened because you know you've given it to other other people, or uh, maybe you've given it unwisely, or you've given it too freely, or you, this is all the judgment stuff, not reality. Um, <clears throat> so you've kind of cheapened it. Um, so a loss of faith, uh, a desecration of sanctity. And you never knew what the gods could bring and by playing the game of who's to blame. So blame. Uh, it gets harder all the time to put my trust in you. So reverence, please, let sleeping dogs die. Um, and then it repeats, um, repeats that phrase a couple of times to end. So sometimes, sometimes I think this is a song from the point of view of the person with retroactive jealousy and sometimes I think this is a song from the point of view of the partner because it's the partners of um, someone with retroactive jealousy that would be saying let sleeping dogs die you know leave it alone it's all in the past and the person with the RJ that's uh, wanted to ask about it and, and is not wanting to let the sleeping dog lie um, so you took my hand and turned it over That that's I would say from the point of view of the uh, partner of the person with IJ, is like, you know, you ask the questions. Um, but no devil so dark as the devil I know it seems to be from the point of view of the person with the RJ, which is, which is kind of interesting. So <clears throat> it's not by no means black and white, but it, it certainly fits. Um, and it's really interesting. The other possible interpretation of this is that uh, there was some infidelity in this relationship um, from the point of view of the person that's the protagonist of the song and they uh, and they're saying to their partner oh you know let it go stop going on about it um, and they're you know playing the game of who's to blame which sounds really unhealthy <laughs> it sounds a little bit like you know what happens sometimes with, with affairs when you know well you know I, I, I wouldn't have had to have had that affair if you know if you'd have uh, given me more sex or you know or I wouldn't have been attracted to that other person if uh, you weren't so fat you know it sounds you know <laughs> it sounds like the perspective of a, an abusive uh, partner and a um, you know somebody that's not taking ownership of their own behavior uh, which is another interpretation of it so so there we go um, let sleeping dogs die um, what do you think um, does it fit with RJ? Um, does it kind of move from a from different perspective from the partner to the uh, to the, the sufferer? Uh, does it resonate with you? Uh, do you think it talks about something else? Is it you know my other hypothesis that it's an affair uh, song? Does that does that fit more? Um, love to hear your thoughts on this. And if you know, and yeah, I mean I've I've looked into this and researched it, but I wasn't able to to find anything useful about you know what inspired the song or you know what Wayne Hussey was um 
inspired by you know what was going through his head with this what maybe what was going on in his life at the time um so please fill me in uh always be polite there's no need to ever be uh, abusive or impolite on uh social media uh, you will be um, given short shrift if you do. Uh, you can say anything to me, really, as long as it's polite and respectful. Uh, I love to hear people's comments. Let me know also if you know of any other songs that relate to retroactive jealousy or might relate to retroactive jealousy, because um, I'd be happy to feature them. Or if you have a request for a video, or if you want me to uh, look at a song, um, you know, I'm quite happy. People have done that in the past. Uh, they've said, "Oh, can you?" Can you look at this uh, this one? Sometimes I haven't been able to. Sometimes I haven't been able to make a head and a tail of the song. Um, and sometimes I have. So um, there's um, a lovely guy that I used to... Um, I met once, I think, physically, you know, face-to-face. Uh, -face. Um, but I used to have a lot, uh, lots of chats to on uh, Facebook, mainly about music. Um, and he died suddenly a few years ago, which was which is really sad. And before, but before he died, he asked me to look at a song which I haven't yet. Um, so I will do that at some point. Um, I've listened to it quite a few times and given it some thought, and we discussed it between us. Um, but I haven't done so. So I'll be. He's a guy called Peter Wooster. Uh, so I'll be doing that uh, at some point as a as a tribute to him. Um, so I won't say when that will be because I always do these videos when the mood takes me so uh thank you for watching uh have a listen to the song um i don't know whether, whether to put links to youtube links to music on or not i don't i don't know not quite sure what you know um how the copyright police operate and whether that's a bad thing um but you'll find this song if you just if you just um, go on YouTube and put Let's Sleepy Dogs Die of the Mission. The, just to avoid ambiguity, uh, there are two bands called The Mission. So The Mission are sometimes, this this mission, are sometimes referred to as The Mission UK, because I believe there's a, um, I think it's an American band of the same name. It might be from somewhere else. Uh, so if you're an American and you Google The Mission, you, you might want to put Mission UK, because you, um, you might get the other band, the other mission. Uh, and with that, uh, thank you very much and rangy Mario.